Look Who's at him. Oh my word. Emily's back. Chris is trying to get underneath your FK8 Honda, mate. <laughs> Lovely. How cool. Yeah, we've got, we've got quite a few people here, haven't we? Oh my word. <laughs> Loads of people here. That's amazing. Check out yeah, Chris. Exactly. Like That's what I'm saying, Chris mate. Looks Creasy looks Stop. like he's got he's got double glazing sales uh, at nine in the morning, and then he's got tennis at uh, half past one in the afternoon. Check his. Wait, mate. Stop messing around with your little, you other muggy little mates. Get a real person on here. We bring a crowd in. Your muggy little mates, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get the show on the way. Hello and welcome. Um, I'm Paul O'Neill. Uh, we've got Tony in the corner. Give us a wave, Tony. There he is. He's just messing around with some probably event bright movie. Um, but yeah, welcome to the uh, the positive pit stop. It is, I believe, the ninth positive pit stop, and that is madness because we've had a couple of weeks off actually. And firstly, I'll say, uh, well, m myself and Tony will apologise. Life just got in the way last week, um, and we just couldn't uh, we couldn't get online and um, and sort anything out. We were just flat out. We were one end of the country one minute, and Tony was flat out busy with his life and work as well so yeah and um, thanks for joining us anyway and um, it's awesome to be here again so it's a one hour show where we can have a chat we can learn we can share stories uh, positive stories and we can discuss aspects of mental health and well-being which we've done um eight times so far and i've enjoyed it it's been awesome and it's great to, uh, that the um that the light is still shining these days, isn't it? Because it's getting uh, it's getting a lot longer in the days. So it's awesome. And we've got a very, very special guest who I'm sure you're all here for, who is an awesome guy um, and, and a fella, in my opinion, that is just growing into a giant um, of a person in the British touring car uh, establishment, which is lovely. Tony, over to you. Speak some sense, my son. Some sense. Um, cool. That's a challenge. Um, so before I do... Um, Guinness World Record holder. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that, Harry? All right, okay. I'll quickly tell you. Um, this is this is about crazy this show. So yeah, I uh, couldn't say much. There was a show I missed. Uh, Jack Benyon jumped in for us. We had Perry McCarthy on the uh, the original Stig, and I thought I was going to get back from this world record attempt of, I was doing uh, with a guy called uh, Marcus Armitage, uh, a European Tour Pro. And um, I couldn't get away from the post-production uh, meeting in time. So I rang Tony up, told him I couldn't make it, rang um, Jack Benyon and he come and jumped in. But anyway, long and short of it was BMW had rang me a few weeks previous, um, basically because Colin Turkington was testing. They needed somebody to jump in an M8 convertible, drive down a runway and try and catch a golf ball that a pro had hit. The record was 275 yards. And uh, I caught the golf ball at, I think, 300 yards exactly. Um, it took quite a few attempts, to be fair. We nearly hit it the first time. And, um, and then we got it on the fourth attempt, I think. And it didn't count because it was a yard under. So you can see Scott Waller there is... Um, that, that's definitely not me, that Barbie, because even if you shaved Barbie's head, it'd still have more hair than I've got. So, yeah, anyway... Yeah, we did it. Mark Armitage is a legend. It was amazing. It's one of the most amazing things I've ever done. Um, and as Creasy will tell you, when you win races, it's such a buzz. And when I've won races, the same buzz was when the golf ball dropped in and the excitement. And it was just, it was so organic and amazing. I just I haven't, I haven't done any anything like that before in my life. But the last thing I will say, because I know Danielle's on the on the call as well, Danielle Simpson, who does a lot of um, affirmations and, and, and all the well-being sides and mental uh, state of mind. I've got to admit to her that I actually did something that I spoke to her about a while back, which is creatively visualising how you're going to go about something. And, and, I, and I did it the, the week leading up and I visualised that we were going to do the record and we were going to catch it and being all positive and everything. So um, we did it. So anyway, that's enough of my... Yeah, you're muted now. Yeah, we 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 only wanted like a couple of minutes, mate. <laughs> tell you what, he can talk that boy, can't he? I'll tell you what, it's a good job you've got that button, Tony. You know? that. Actually, no. <laughs> this is just a joy having this control. Right. Yeah. 
very briefly what the show is all about. I think looking at, at the names of everyone here, you're all familiar to the format. Um, we've tried to make it as interactive as possible. Um, we we will unmute Owen and let him lead the the Q and A session with with Creasy. Um, every week we we get a star on on the show. Um, we we talk a bit about their plans for the season, look back on the careers, and also um, we we talk a bit about mental health and look at different tips that might help us uh, in our lives, and hopefully have a bit of fun, uh, pick up some good stuff as well. We, we make it as interactive as we possibly can. You see on your bottom of your screen the chat function. Uh, I'll drop a hello there uh, alongside Shaz's message already. Stick any questions that come to mind, any comments in the chat. And as soon as uh, Owie's finished waffling on, we'll start asking some really good questions. So uh, get those questions in there and we'll get you on screen. Uh, back to you, Paul. Unmute. <laughs> no. ah, honestly, I'm proper not happy with that, Tony. That's that's you mute me again, mate, and I will come over your house with Rob Marshall. You mute all the time, anyway, ladies and gentlemen. Someone who was an absolute star of last year's touring car championship, he was the star of the year before, he was star in Ginettas, um, he was the star of media day, in my opinion, even though he was running six bar of boost, had no waiting, and the car was just on. Josh Cook told me he could have lapped the whole field with, I'm only joking, he did a great job in media day, there's lots of hype around him. Michael Creese, ladies and gentlemen, absolute hero, thanks for coming on, Captain. Um, Creasy. It was a good old day, wasn't it? I seen you down at media day, and I literally was you were looking the most professional I've ever seen you. I just said hello to you for five seconds. You were looking through data. You worked hard, mate. How's it going? Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, it's, it was a good day for me, but, you know, uh, I've been keep, keeping my head down all winter. Um, I'm doing exactly what I need to be doing, and I've got my body right. I've got my head right. Um, hopefully as right as it can be and uh, you, you're, you will definitely see a different side I mean I've got uh, I've got to come out the blocks this year Paul as you know I've got I won the Jack Sears last year and, and I've got nowhere to hide now you know I'm in the main team with Josh Cook it's uh, we're heading up the, the BTC this year and you know last year it was sort of Tom and Josh and me in the separate garage and I was sort of down to my own thing but um yeah, I mean, hello, yeah, you and me. So, yeah, but like this year, I've got, like I say, I've got nowhere to hide and uh, I've got to try and raise my game in every single area. Is it, You, I know we speak quite a lot and a lot of people on here will know me and you were a bit of a tag team um, when we were when we were on uh, ITV Saturday socials, mate. Um, and I spoke to you quite a lot and... You know, we, we speak now and again over phone and stuff. But is it, I've always said that your first year is free. And, you know, no one really thinks much of what you're doing. You just get get on with it. But that second year, mate, it was it was kind of breakthrough, wasn't it? But it was a massive ask that really, you know, doing what you've done and, and going to where you did. Yeah, I mean, it helped being in the Honda FKA. Um, it was a good car, good team. Um, I had two good peddlers next to me, so I had all the ingredients there. Um, being honest with you, it was a real struggle for me mentally last year. Um, having a 40-odd point lead and then um, seven DNFs in a row and coming out, you know, 30 points behind with two rounds to go. And um, a lot depended on Jack Sears for me. If, if, if I won the Jack Sears, then my sponsors would roll on to this year. Uh, if I didn't, then who knows if, if, if I would have made the grid this year. But um, lucky for me, uh, obviously we went on to do it. And uh, But it was a real emotional roller coaster, and I went through some, some dark times. I've got a sports therapist on board um, and a mind coach, David Ford, who used to be the Millwall number one keeper. So we kept it in the old, uh, in the lion's den. And uh, he, he got, when I phoned him up, I said, 40, I said, I'm, I'm done. I said, you know, he's, he was, this guy is an Irish international footballer, uh, goalkeeper. And uh, I said to him, I'm, uh, like I said, Let, let's just cancel this year. Let's focus on next year and see if we can come back. And he said, nah, mate, he said, your, your season starts now. 
and uh, he prepped me into Snetterton and we and we turned up there, won all three races of the Jack Sears Snetterton weekend and all of a sudden it was back on for brands and, you know, I've got him to thank for that because you know, we went through quite a bit of, of, of mental stuff and he got me, you know, we done, I've done six weeks of breathing exercises, all the stuff that none of you guys have seen what I've prepped myself this year with and uh, like I say, like, so far, I've only done three tests in the car um, and, uh, you know, there is people are talking. It's genuine lap times, and uh, Josh will will vouch for me. We, I'm definitely a step closer to him, if not matching him at the moment. Um, so it's all, all good. I was going to say that to you because Josh, for me, is <clears throat> is one of, and I know you're going to agree with me. He is one of the uh, best touring car drivers at the minute. Not just the one of the fastest. He's one of the only people I can remember that really matched Ash Sutton. But not just that, the, the, the engineering capability of that guy and the mental capability. He's amazing, isn't he, mate? He's unbelievable. I mean, I think he actually beat Ash. He's never lost to a teammate. And obviously, Ash was his teammate. And, he, you know, that's one thing. He's always, you know, first thing he's beating his teammates. Second thing is obviously winning, you know, winning as much as he can. And uh, but we're, he's just, he's just different class. Look, he, he's, he's, he's obviously I'm 37. He's a lot younger than me, but his head on his shoulders. I, if I had a head like him at that age, I'd be a multi-millionaire now and probably own a touring car. <laughs> what do you mean by that? You mean ginger with raisins for eyes? No, it's what's inside that ginger head. He's just different class, mate. He, 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 the way he advises me, the way he coaches me, the way that he can help understand the car, the way that he understands the car. And he, he doesn't ever get, you know, involved with his engineers. He, he likes to turn up on a weekend and let the engineers do their work, but it's just the way he understands everything so well. And it's not just touring car, it's McLaren, it's Ginettas, it's every range you know he's got a suspension company which is doing fantastic because he just knows every single thing there is to know about about race cars and cars in general and uh and then you get me who actually knows nothing i know a bit, bit of copper pipe and a boiler and that's about it <laughs> <laughs> to be fair <coughs> people on here won't know but um you helped me out i had a disaster with a with a house that i own uh, a rental house and uh oh god it was smashed to pieces and creasy bless him sorted me out a sink he sorted <laughs> me out a radiator and he was like it's all right mate don't worry about it i'll sort it out and it turned up i was like mega good lad thanks the girl who's renting it off me i've not told you this she'd been in it a day dropped a perfume bottle it went straight through the sink what do you make your sinks out of mate paper mache <laughs> well he's got one of tell you i put a bath in his house the other week <laughs> well, well cheap mate but going going back to going back to uh, cookie and and the, and the team cookie is like you know people you're always trying to match your teammate but why would he want to help you out mate because you you know i'm a genuine i'm a genuine kind of guy and i needed his help last year to win the jack sears and um, I vowed to him and said, if ever I can help him, you know, I'll be the first one uh, helping him out. And, and and that guy could definitely, yeah, no, he helped me out so much. And he genuinely knows if he's in a chance to win this championship. I mean, I, I don't know if a lot of people saw it back in, in uh, with him and Smiley when they lost the championship by one point. Um, you know, Smiley was in front of Cookie. Uh, in third place at Silverstone and, and got the call on the radio, like, move over, let Cookie through just for the extra point. And um, and it didn't happen. Um, and the team, you know what it's like. We're the driver and, yeah, we've got our own goals, but you're in a team, essentially. And if you get that call to move over, it, yes, it's frustrating, but you have to do it sometimes. And, um, you know, you look back at the famous Jason Plato when, when, when he done it, you know, and made it obvious and stuff. But... Whether you make it obvious or not, it's a team sport. And all them guys and, and, and girls in our team are the ones putting the effort in. You know, we turn up, have a bit of dinner, drive the car around and go home. Do you know what I mean? And and when they lost the championship by one point where Smiley didn't move over and he took the podium and stuff like that, um, you know, that was very difficult for Josh to handle and take on. And because he's a very team player as well, he, he's the first one down there with the mechanics. You know, 
with testing the other day, the team weren't allowed into eight o'clock, but he made sure he was down there when the team was setting up, even though we we're in the hotels and stuff like that. So, you know, that, that affected him, but he knows full well. I, I, he knows if I was leading the race and I had to move over for my first ever win, I'd do it for him because I wouldn't be where I am if it weren't for him. Do you know what I mean? So I think we've got that, that, that initial bond. I think I'm being a bit of a pain in his ass now, though, because I'm just as quick as him. So he's doing his head in a little bit. It's like... <laughs> well, that's my next question, to be honest, mate, is um, <clears throat> how does that dynamic change? You've seen the dynamic change over the years. Formula One, Hamilton, Rosberg, um, you know, not saying that Rosberg was ever slower than Hamilton, but there was an issue. They were friends. And then there was this like, you know, what, what's the deal, mate? Because you're at the minute on paper, you're faster than him. I know you have different programs at media days, but you turn up at the first. No, I mean, I, 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 you know, I've got nothing to hide. Um, I'm a straight up guy, and I know the fans want to know the inside of this pool, and that's why I'm saying it. And you're always blunt with them guys. Um, media day, I pulled. I had no weight in the car. We had a new set of tyres in the afternoon. I, I, I didn't run any new tyres in the morning, so my genuine pace was P5 uh, after the first session. And we know a lot of people put new tyres on, so. As soon as I set that time on the old tyres, um, I thought, hold on a minute, we're, we're, that's the fastest I'd ever been. I mean, last year, before the engine problems and stuff, um, and the car, the car breaking down, I think the fastest we went was a 58 dead. First lap out of the box, I'd done a 58 dead on my first fly, and then I was in a 57.8, 57.6, 57.5, uh, straight out of the box. So when I got out of the car on old tyres, um, I knew I was there, or thereabouts. Um, and then we, we changed, and, and the biggest part of it is Steve Brady, my, my engineer. And my engineer is Steve, and he used to engineer Cookie for the last two years. So I've now got Josh Cook's engineer. So we've got all the data, all the setups, everything we've got, and we've turned up there. Um, and the problem was, everyone last year thought I needed a safe car, and... I needed it to be like this and I needed it like this. And this engineer was gone. You're getting it as I give it to you. I deal with it. And I've just got in the car and it's absolutely suited me down to the ground. Um, you know, I can deal with the car, whatever it's doing. And I can feedback. My feedback is, is identical to Josh's, which is we're in two different rooms sometimes. And it's identical. So, so that's been a big step for me. But immediate day, when we come in for the lunch break and I was P5, um, we, we, we then changed a few bits on the car, still normal engine, no, no qualifying run, no, no fuel outfit. We had 25 kilos of fuel in. Um, I think we had, you know, I, sh I probably shouldn't be saying this, but I'm, I'm just telling it as it is. Um, and then we put the weight in, we had no ignition in the car, we just had a normal map and I went out and delivered that time. And I'll be honest with you, I come in the pits and I came across the radio and I was like, wow. That was, and it, you know, when you come in and you're trembling a little bit, where you've tried so hard, like, and, 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 you've, and you've got that lap time. And uh, it was a genuine time. And, and, and then I've gone and done that at Brands Hatch in the test. And I've gone and done that at Snetterton yesterday. Um, and Jake Hill was there yesterday and he pulled me to one side and was like, what have you been eating for, for breakfast? Like, because uh, he was like, you're, uh, you're seriously up there. But I, you, you know what it's like. You turn up in the first round, it could be P15. You don't know what other people are doing. You don't know what they're doing. But I know Shedden threw a few new tyres at that to beat my lap time at media day. That's for certain. Yeah, because the, the bragging rights, you know, you do see like a team hard up there, don't you? are not saying that Goff's time was, you know, not um, not genuine. But, you, you know, I know how it works because I've been on them media days as a smaller team. Usually you'll stick a bit more camber on or you'll, you know, when I haven't been turbo charged, it's all, you, you've got to do it. You, you know, as, as well as I do, and I totally get it. Um, you know, Jack's obviously openly said in his, in his interview, that was on soft tyres hmm. um, when they'd done that. Uh, but they got, and we all have, we've all got sponsors to please. And we've got a lot of people plowing a lot of money into this to make us all go. And, to have a little bit of media day, what's the harm in that? Do you know what I mean? You know, we, we, we've got to keep everybody happy. Yeah, Jack's a good peddler. And yeah. it's great to see the Cooper up there. But, mm -hmm. you know, if it's going to happen, they've got a lot of work to do with that car. But I'm sure they will get that car running towards the, towards the mid to the late part of that year. And and I hope they do do it. You know, there's a little bit in my heart for Team Hard. They, they would want to give me my chance. 
But yeah, back to what we were doing. You know, we just got to focus on the job and uh, and 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 deliver when when we turn up at Froxton next week. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be sound as well. That's what I was going to say to you. Last question, actually. Um, Thruxton for me was your was what turned you into somebody who needed to be recognised as a front runner when you really give your two teammates a right run for the money. And Matt Neal, I think you had him behind you, mate, in a lot of the races. And you had a couple of punches, didn't you? That looked to yeah. me like, that's the hardest circuit on the calendar. I bet you can't wait to get back there, can you, for the first round? <laughs> Yeah, I'm just hoping I can uh, I can start as I left off there. I mean, that was where I would say I went from an amateur to a professional, if that's fair in saying. Um, I, I saw Colin Turkington flying through the field behind me, and I was in P7. Matt Neal in front of me, P6, and and Colin come flying through the pack, and and it was it was where it was really surreal. Like you know, when you're driving around and you're sort of like. And Colin's so clever. He was setting me up in the fast stuff so I'd make a mistake so he could then try and dive on me and stuff. And, and I caught that quite early. So every time we were sort of coming through Noble Goodwood, which you know how scary that is, and you've got a BMW like touching your bumper through there and you've got Matt Neal right in front of you, you you're trying to look everything that's going on. And I was quite new to it. But within a lap or so, I just settled down. I just had one eye on him and I could, and I could just see where he was a bit, where I was a bit quicker, where he was a bit quicker. And that's where I think I developed uh, the skill of touring car a little bit better and race craft. And I learned that. And, uh, you know, and it was great because I then started gapping Colin and I was catching Matt. And it, I, I even <laughs> I even got to the last chicane and there's a tyre barrel there and, and uh, on the inside. But I was so much quicker than Matt through the sector one, through the first turn and into the complex. So I came through the chicane two laps before the end and I bashed the tyres so uh, on the left to just give me a bit more room so I could cut it and then get a better run on him. So I've come round, the tyres have moved out of the way. I've gone straight across the kerb to try and like nail him into the first corner and bang the tyre went and I just kept it pinned. I've done about 10 grand worth of damage. I've done the diff, I've done the gearbox, I've done everything on it. I just literally, I had no front tyre on it and I just kept it pinned all the way around and finished like 20th, but I just needed the Jack Sears points. <laughs> I, I love that. It's like, so happy to cause £10,000 worth of damage. Amazing. That's what, that's what <laughs> I think everyone loves about you, mate. Yeah, mate, it blew the gear back, so it was amazing. Jeez, fair play, mate. Um, but you are, it does seem like you're a different person, Creasy, to a point. I don't think you'll ever lose your um, your humour, mate, which is awesome. But I think the great thing about you now is, from a pundit's point of view, I can see you starting to, you know it's your time, mate, and I can tell that just from the few times I've seen you this year at Media Day and um, and now. But the only thing, as I'd say, is that cap needs to go because you do look like a bit of a dickhead. Um, Tony? Um, He's a 15 quid, you know? <laughs> Actually, can I, I might buy one, mate. I might buy one and be on ITV with that. <laughs> Where they got Richard? Where's Richard Energy? There it is. Oh, oh mate, look at that. Actually, yeah, we could look. We look pretty awesome. I look like the cross between the milk tray man and someone who needs a hair transplant. And um, Tony, you can have a go now, mate. Um, oh, thanks, mate. That's all right. I really appreciate that. Um, I want to go back to what you were saying about. Um, working with the sports therapist, Creasy. Um, brave choice, Millwall. Um, I don't suppose you disagree with anything that he says. <laughs> no. We, no, I'm a Millwall, Millwall lad myself, so it was, uh, it was nice. I, I, I actually met him, um, we, we played a game of golf together up at Stoke Park, and uh, it was a bit of a ch uh, charity do, and me and him played played together. We just did it off, and obviously I was in awe because he was a mill. He was the most cap mill player, um, and uh, he, he got to like ninety nine games or something, and, uh, or not two hundred or one hundred ninety games or whatever it was. And he he went out and bought these like gold gloves and like had all this stuff, and uh, they got a new manager in, and he never ever played his two hundred <laughs> game or something. <laughs> 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 so that's his story, but no, he's a good guy. And um, but yeah, he, 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 working with him was it was it was good because you know he he is a he is a hero of mine, and and you know any mind coach or you know he's very into meditation and breathing and all that stuff, which Paul would probably laugh his head off uh, that I'm doing that sort of stuff. But it works. 
for me. I, I found myself getting in the car and, and, and almost having a panic attack. I used to, on the grid, I used to have to undo my belts. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't get a, a deep breath in. And I'm looking around and I'm like, oh, no, the lights are on. You know, what am I doing? And I was panic. I was panicking um, because I just I felt so much pressure on me. And um, But this year, I've got in that car. First time in Brands after I got in it, I was like, get your breath, get your breath. And then I got it and then delivered the times. And then, you know, Snetterton like yesterday, Silverstone, Media Day just feel so comfortable now I feel like I've got the right engineer I feel like I've got the right mechanics I've got the right car underneath me and it's just it's all clicking together but it's uh, that that mindset aspect you know you can you can have the a good car under you but it, it's that extra edge and I'd really like to bring in Sarah and Danielle briefly to, to just ask you a few more questions because they can actually probably ask far better because we had a whole session on that just recently um so uh, danielle will be busy um drinking um very healthy fruit shakes and uh, i know sarah appears to have a gin lass about the size of one of your sink treaters <laughs> i love that i noticed that as well i was like oh my god sarah she's like hammering down a bucket of gin and there's me with a turmeric tea <laughs> how fun Hi, how are you hey, god, how are you Long time no see. I know, I miss you, I miss you. I had to jump on, fellow Kent, lovely person, so I had to jump on. Um, I am smiling from ear to ear hearing that you are now embracing breath work and meditation. Um, and yeah, I suppose, obviously Tony's just massively put me on the spot. I didn't have a question. I was just like, oh, Chrissy meditates, this is great. <laughs> um, but I suppose a question to me, or question from me, sorry, would be, um, is there any other techniques that you could share with the group that you sort of embraced in your now motorsport life? The biggest one for me, Danielle, is probably a technique that you guys are familiar with, box breathing. So mm -hmm. sort of like, you know, in for four seconds, hold for four, out for four you know and just you just keep doing that sequence and I pretty much do it every single night now to get to sleep because I just feel like it clears my mind and it just I just I know it sounds a bit weird to people especially coming from me because you know I'm the world's worst person to sell this but for me I've, I've, I've just taken myself out of my natural environment and just gone for it and it's really worked for me um, so that 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 breathing technique is it just sort of like you know when you're laying there and you're about to go to sleep and you've got a million and one things going on in your head I just found it you know just breathing naturally because your breathing controls your mind so yeah. you know if you're focused on on, on, on the breathing then you, you can just clear your mind and before you know it I wake up in the morning I'm like I don't even remember going to sleep so uh, yeah that, that that's really cool um, but yeah just working on like um on, on on big deep breaths as well we've been doing quite a bit so like breathing in sort of starting at six and then going up when I first started it he said like you've got to breathe in for like eight and ten I could only get to like six and I was like what's going on here and it took me like four or five weeks to get to like 13 of breathing in and then holding it and breathing out and and it's all about how you breathe in you know people breathing through their mouths which is not ideal it's, you know so loads of little techniques I've picked up which has helped me Mm -hmm. yeah, I've done the same as you Michael funny enough I did the same um it's so good to hear another driver using coaching and a mittens fit as well but the weekend I did exactly the same as you I pulled up in the assembly area and had that moment of oh what am I doing yeah. am I mad and there'd just been an accident in front of us so we were held up a bit longer than normal and I started to feel that anxiety panic build up and I just shut my eyes and I just did the breathing technique and uh, I didn't care what I looked like to anyone that saw me, but I did it and straight away I was focused and relaxed and calm. And after that, I didn't have any more nerves. So definitely that works for me as well. It's, it is yeah. incredible, isn't it? I mean, you know, you know what it's like. I mean, being on that grid and, and you know, it's all in the back of our minds. A lot of stuff can happen in bits and pieces. And we don't think about that sort of stuff. And, you know, when I was driving... Uh, at Silverstone and see Rory Butcher have a massive accident and Bobby Thompson have a massive accident and it can happen to any single one of us and um, you know it's very tough to start a race again with, with all that stuff going on in your mind but I, I, I just feel that yeah, look, I'm a I'm a 
bloke's bloke. I love a beer. I go to the pub, and, and and if I was down the pub having this conversation, I'd probably get absolutely taken apart. But I just <laughs> found it is a real good technique as a as a racing driver. And and I don't know if you remember, you know, visualization with uh, uh, Colin Turkinson and, and and Aidan Moffat are really good at that. And and you know they can pretty much drive the track with their eyes shut and and be within a half a second of. Um, half a second of their lap time so visualization is a, is, a, is another big thing for me do you have a visual tool at all in your car i've got like a visual sticker which is a wagtail which reminds me of my dad and why i'm racing again and i kept finding you know though you get those moments where you're in the zone all of a sudden you sort of your mind drifts ever so slightly i was able to look at that sticker on the dashboard and straight away snap back into why I was doing it. Do you have anything like that in your car? It's funny you should say that because me and Josh Cook were saying yesterday we're going to have a picture of our, our data engineer Matas on our, on our steering wheel. <laughs> we're such a legend. But, uh, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't, but I do, I, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, again, I mean, I know this is probably not... Oh. Let's go. He's <laughs> muted himself. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I didn't back. touch it. <laughs> uh, I know it's probably not the right forum, but just, just, I, you know, I don't want to go on about this, and it, you know, it's, it's, it's. Def- I didn't think I'd be talking about this tonight, but when I was at Brands Hatch, obviously, I lost, uh, we lost our baby, and it, I had to get in the car and drive that weekend, which was probably the most difficult thing I've ever done. Um, and I remember following the safety car thinking about my wife and I remember just driving around and I was thinking oh I wonder I wonder you know what, uh, where she is or and then all of a sudden the, the safety car's gone and all the cars are coming and uh it was just and I had to switch back on to gear and and, and, and focus and uh you know that's a very tough thing when your mind starts wandering when you're doing them sort of speeds do you know what I mean can I ask well, one more question it. and then I'll hand back over, sorry. Um, do you have do you have like a playlist or anything to sort of like get you pumped up and get you ready? Also, I want to ask Paul that question um, in a minute. Don't ask Paul about music. <laughs> <laughs> really, to be fair, I, I, it's like golf to think about it, you know, and I focus for... Sorry? I oh, know you're back. Am I back? Yeah, you're back. Yeah, so... Uh, I, it's like it's like anything. I try not to think about it all the way up till I get in the car. Um, mm. You know, like playing golf. I I I hit a shot and then I'll be talking about racing or I'll be talking about and then I walk up to that shot, concentrate for thirty seconds while I hit the ball and then and then just completely snap out of it. And that's I don't particularly listen to music. I, I like music. I, I, don't, I don't really. I, I spend a lot of time with my family and my friends at racing. And um, I just make sure we're having, we're there for the right reasons. We're having a laugh when we're having a laugh and, and, and a good, good time. But when, when the serious stuff has to happen, then you switch on and focus. But I, I try not to focus all day because it's impossible for the human brain to focus 24 hours a day for three days over, over a weekend. You'll get yeah. people like Colin and uh, Josh Cook and people like that try, trying to be on it every single minute and that might work for them but it just doesn't work for me amazing right i'll shut up now thanks for letting me say hello <laughs> bye guys Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's great just uh, very briefly crazy I, I don't know if you you caught when you were talking about being a millwall fan but uh, sam, sam graham has, has changed into a queen's park rangers shirt the mighty r's and uh yeah, lifelong QPR fun here, so it's always nice. Yeah, work. you, you. I remember when because when I used to be a big Mill fan, it was back in oh, two thousand five when we won the uh, uh, Division Two Championship, and then you stole Marcus Bircham off us. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, bigger club. I went, I, bigger and then I went club. to Loftus Road. <laughs> I, I went to I went to QPR away, and uh, Marcus Bircham came out, and he, he, he's got a lion tattooed on his arm, Marcus Bircham. And uh, the Millwall Lion, and uh, he'd come out and he had like, because obviously all the Millwall boys were, were giving him a bit of stick, and he had like white and blue hair. He dyed it, so they were singing a the song. They were going, he's got bird shit on his head, and they going, and he's got a lion on his arm. It was brilliant. It's one of the best football chants I've ever heard. <laughs> Fantastic! I went to the Den once. 
<laughs> never, <Yeah>. never. <laughs> um, you, you touched on um, uh, some of the things that, that have gone on off track with you, uh, you know, over the past 12, 18 months. And we were just chatting before we came on air about uh, some of the work you're now getting involved with it, with Mind. Do you, want to, do you want to just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, it's a bit weird, really. Again, Paul's probably been asked this question a million times, but uh, the Broadstairs community, they've got a, like a little Rotary Club uh, in Broadstairs, Rotary Club, obviously nationwide, and, and they asked me to do a, a bit of an uh, inspirational talk and stuff, and um, well, I've done it for the uh, university that's local with their engineers and, and bits and pieces, and it sort of spiralled on from there, really, and then there, there, there was some real good, feedback from the the the, the talk that i done and uh, then they come back and ask me to turn on the christmas lights for christmas so i'm sure paul i'm sure paul's been uh, asked to do that many a time <laughs> in liverpool <laughs> and then so i was a bit like okay where's this going and uh, and then the next thing uh, the rotary club are basically um sort of uh want they're doing loads of work uh, locally and they want me to do a bit for the mind charity and, uh, and that's the charity that we're, we're now going to be associated with. So that's great news. It's only just starting, but all the local stuff um, that we can raise money locally in Thanet and uh, Kent, then hopefully we can put some big money together and, and do something for mind. And like me, Paul, me and Paul have done it and Scott Waller, you know, walking around the tracks and hopefully we can do a bit more of that this year with the fans back and a load of campsite live stuff and, and Facebook live and, and everything else that we can do to raise a bit of money for them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's close to all of us, isn't it? At the end of the day, especially with the year we just had, you know, who knows? That's awesome. I don't, don't suppose there's a rotary clubbing witness, Paul? And I don't suppose you've ever been asked to join it. I, I have. Yeah. The only time I'd go near Christmas lights was to get them off a massive tree and witness and wave them in. Elam. <laughs> right. I think it must be time for your uh, get to know Creasy bit. Right. I, I love this. We do it for we'll get to know whoever the guest is, but we all know about Creasy. He's a one trick pony. He just says rubbish jokes and thinks everyone will laugh. Um, but anyway, I think we should get to know him better. Uh, Creasy, are you ready, me old fruit? Yeah, mate. Right, Always. You, right you little lizard head. Uh, quick fire round. Favourite food? Fire mashing liquor. What did you just say, sorry? <laughs> what did you say? Fire mash, fire mash liquor. Not oh, liquor, fire oh, mash liquor. Oh, sorry, I've, I've really... I've, oh, OK. Uh, uh, favorite drink? JD and Coke. Or oh, oh, Rich Energy. Sorry, Rich Energy. JD and Rich Energy. <laughs> when I'm down the den with the firm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, dear. What's your current road car, you little G? What? What's your current road car? Um, an SBR Range Rover. I'm going to rob that. Greta Thunberg sends her best. Um, What's uh, what's, your dream, what's your dream road car, mate? Uh, Range Rover SPR. <laughs> I was going to say that's why that's why I got one. I thought you were going to say can of rich energy, mate. <laughs> Favorite holiday destination, you little Tory. Uh, oh, I tell you what, I've just been to Dubai, and that was a good that was a good little trip. But I'd have to say Ibiza. Ibiza, mate. Are you spelling Ibiza? Are you spelling it with 17 E's? Yeah, and 777 at the end. <laughs> oh, Ibiza. Oh, Ibiza. Um, oh, I love this one. Blur or Oasis? Oasis, 100%. Went to their last ever uh, last ever one at Wembley. It was unbelievable. Oh, that's interesting. I thought you'd be more of a Blur person because they're still Yeah, uh, Oasis all day long. Nice. Um, currently, Spice... currently playing in the SBR, actually, on the way to work. With a kind of rich energy. Spice Girls or Little Mix? 100%. You know the answer to this, don't you? 100%. I... Well, the thing is, I got absolutely ripped for this because I am a massive Spice Girls fan. And when I was younger, when they first come out, I even got, like, one of my pals went to America and they brought me back a Spice Girls T-shirt and all this sort of stuff. I've still got it in the wrapper. 
There you go. Fully mute him. <laughs> <laughs> look at Waller. Look at Waller's head. Waller's lost the plot. He, he's he's gone. He's going to remove him from Jeff Army. <laughs> but don't let me near your sister, though. <laughs> no, no comment. Don't let me near your sister, though. Oh my God. I <laughs> will. I'll be. Oh no, 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 I'm not even going to go there. Listen here, desperate Dan. Last one. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> Favorite ITV motorsport sport presenter. <sighs> what is wrong with you people? Uh, well, I'd be honest with you. You are my mate, but like, you never really. <laughs> what? What? what all I got was a load of stick off of you. Yeah, I know. I, to be fair, no, I'm going to go Louise Goodman. Oh, that's fair. Do you know what? Lose mega. No, I know that. I know you're me, mate. I know you're not going to pick me, but uh, I remember... So next time someone asks me who my favourite touring car driver is, I'm just going to say, I don't know, Chris James or someone really obvious. <laughs> no, I would, you know that you're number one, so I don't want to pick you. So uh, I, I'm going to go Louise. I'm going to go with the proper ITV lot, not the, you know, the, the Saturday one. That's fair enough. Well, that's the last time I ever put your name forward for a Facebook Live, you little knob. Um, right. OK, so... We've got that, um, that rubbish out of the way. We know nothing more about you. Um, <laughs> it's them um, rubbish jokes. It's them rubbish <laughs> jokes again, isn't it? Basically all mine. Um, the big news at BTC, apart from you, my friend, is um, we spoke about Josh, but Jade Edwards... Um, That's not big news. It isn't, but, but I think a lot of people don't really realise how professional and how... How good, Jade. I think Jade's going to be... You and Jade are probably going to be the biggest surprises of this year in my book, mate. mate. I am telling you now that girl can drive. She is... Without a sh I, I'm not... I'm not... You know, I didn't know what to expect. I, I, I know she's had a, um, a long career in, in different formulas and bits and pieces, and um, she jumped in that touring car, mate, and I, I, and I came on the radio at Silverstone. I was like... What's going on here? I can't even catch her. Couldn't even catch her. Honestly, she was mega. She was unbelievable. And uh, and I think she's going to be the big surprise package of the year because, you know, like yesterday, for instance, the rate that she learned at, I thought I was a quick learner, but, you know, she is just, you know, she, uh, it's, she got in the car. I'm sure she won't mind me saying this. And, um, you know, she's like scratching about me and Josh, boom, straight out of the box, bang. You know, what you'd expect. We've done a few years in touring car. You've got to deliver. You know how hard it is to deliver one lap. Boom, boom, boom. She's got in a car like Snetterton's biggest track, biggest track on the calendar, probably the furthest she should be away. Yeah. And she's scratching around like a few seconds off the pace. And she's like, oh, then what's going on? I'm like, you're only a few seconds off. You ain't doing too bad. And she was uh, like, for her first time around Snetterton, said, you're a couple of seconds away. After 25 minutes, this is, right? And she went, I haven't put new tyres on or, or anything. Or I haven't, I'm still on my old tyres. And I'm like, okay, well, trust me, put them on round him. You're going to find the second. Um, and try, you know, she put them on and I'm not going to say, but she was close. And round Snetterton, you know, if you get close around there, then, then you're going to be uh, you're going to be golden for the year, hundred percent. It's a long gold lap, isn't it? I know. Snetterton's a funny place. I've done a lot of testing there back in the day, but I think the thing with Jade is, I think what we all shouldn't do. And this is not, by the way, this is when I'm in this conversation because you're a woman. We're just having this conversation because you're new to touring cars, and she's a big yeah. That, that's, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's all I was getting across. Is all you're listening, mate. The other thing we should not do is judge you on Thruxton at the first round because the first round for the new oh, it's... Will be terrific. Rick Parfit, Jade, um, I'm trying to think who else, but J Jade is good. She will struggle around there because you know yourself yeah. the momentum and the moving around of the car in fifth gear is absolutely horrific. And if you are not used to the car, you're stuck. She hasn't really done Yeah, that. but I've told her, I've said this. I said, look at Thruxton as a test. And then start start your campaign from Snetterton. Mm -hmm. I said because 
you know what it's like. Froxton's the only place on the package that you, you change your springs, you change your dampers, you change the car's different. The car is completely different to where it is everywhere else on the calendar. Mm. You can go from Brands to Donington and have a few little minor changes, but Froxton, you've got some big high speed corners you've got you know it's a it's a massive massive place i mean you know i like i feel sorry for rick parfit and uh, jade and uh you know who else is new to it um i mean geddy's going there i think he didn't start there last year you've got um sam smelt i know he's done it before so he's going to be a little bit but you know in a new car you've got a load of new drivers going different places this year and i just think it's going to be a real uh, a real eye opener but you know like the top boys are going to be there 100 percent out of the box and it'll be really interesting because obviously i said this the other day it's always traditionally been a honda track hasn't it froxton um because we've always turned up there with a bit of weight in the car or the rear wheel drive cars have always had a bit of weight in the car but we're actually turning up there with no weight so qualifying is going to be really interesting to see what Turkington, what Sutton can do around that track with no weight in the car, whether it will help, because I know a lot of them cars are engineered and designed to carry weight, yeah. or whether it's going to hinder them, and, and whether the Honda is going to be even more rapid around there, or it's going to be a bit slower about the weighting, because obviously, you know, dynamics are, and our cars are designed to carry a little bit of weight. So it's a real, I, c I can't wait to go there to see what, as, as a fan, what the dynamics are going to be like with the front wheel, rear wheel drive, because that track is traditionally spoke about as a front wheel drive track, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. You want to, what did you say? You want to know what the dynamics would be like, but Shedden will be rapid and Dan Robot will have a beard. That's all you need to know. Get that. Creasy, no? Anyway, I got it. Creasy, why treble seven? Look, hang on a minute. Look at Emily. Emily's looking and going, what do you look no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Why treble seven? Um, right. Obviously, uh, I was always, uh, I've always been, well, when I played football, I was number seven. I always liked the number, seven's been my favourite number. I was born on 7th of September. Um, um, and when we were Genesian, we were, um, we went to go with the G40 and someone had had 77. So Vince said, well, you know, Vince is my main guy who's got me where I am today. My main sponsor, Vince Caldicott from Premier Contract Supplies. You know him, Paul. He's a lovely chap. Okay. And uh, he's massive into the church and he's a big Christian. And, um, you know, 777, seven days of the week and all that in the Bible, bits and pieces. Um, and, and and it was a bit of a tribute to him and seven was my number. And, and then we, we went 777 in... Uh, Sorry, we were 77 in G40 and we couldn't, and we had to be 77 in Super Cup or the other way around, one of the ways. And then when we were 777, we won the championship and we just carried that on to, to Touring Car because um, Andrew Jordan was 77 when I started in 2019. We had the option to go back to 77 in 2020, but we just decided to keep it, keep the brand and my, my brand name the same. Mm. Just say it again for us, what was the number? Full seven. Okay. okay. <laughs> if you say seven, seven, seven again, I'm, all I can think of is a massive dreamliner thing. Of a plane yeah, thing. but how good? You know that seven, seven, seven casino? They should be sponsoring Stop me. Seven, 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 seven. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> wait till you see my new sponsor. Six, six, six. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is what I said to Cookie. I went, look, we've got treble seven and, you know, the, the, the halo round my head you're 66 let's make you triple six a little devil we could have a little play on it and all that and he went no nah, i'm not interested <laughs> that sounds about right for him um last one, last one from me Tracy. Um, you are a pretty optimistic happy-go-lucky i would say um, kind of guy how do you deal with things when they uh, start to go wrong because there's a big percentage of Things going wrong in British touring cars, and it's it's always how you make best of the bad days, isn't it? Really, I just sent Drew and Mark in, my twin <laughs> brothers. <laughs> no, um, look, at the end of the day, um, it's racing, and yeah, there's a lot of hype, but you've got to remember the there's a in my head. If anything goes wrong in racing. It is what it is. We're so lucky to be 
in British touring car, racing around the UK, you know, with the best drivers in the world, you know, and I know tempers flare, and I know in the moment you can get caught saying the wrong thing, like, you know, Matt Neal and Jake Hill and Plato and Sutton, but it's only because they're so passionate. But for me, it's a little bit different. And, and my day will come, my day will come. You know, I, 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 I'm still lucky to be there, in my opinion. But, you know, when this year, you'll see a different side of me. It's going to be every gap I'm going to go for. If I, if I upset people along the way, so be it. I've had two years of being the gentleman. Yeah, look, there you go. I'm fighting for my own championship and, and I'll get on with what I'm going to do. 2019, I pretty much moved out of everyone else's way apart from Mark Blundell, which is because I thought that'd be fun. And um, But this year, 100%, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to get stuck in, mate. And if I upset... I'll let Mark and Drew... Well, I didn't hear that last bit, but I think you said you'll let Mark and Drew absolutely drill them. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and the best bit about that, what you were saying about Mark Blundell, I don't think you've got past you even if you a McLaren F1 car. I used to just drop back just so I could hit him. <laughs> yeah, release and send. Um, Creasy, <laughs> every week, mate, we do something called the crap quiz. And unfortunately for our very good friend, <sighs> Posey, he gets the crap quiz questions and he has to do it. So we absolutely set him up and throw him so far under the bus that he <laughs> like a mug. Um, but Chris is a good friend of the show and we love the fact that Chris comes and helps us out. So Chris Hosey, welcome, Captain. Oh, thanks, Paul. <laughs> there we go. This is another round of this, uh, as you like to call it, Chris. Chris. Just call it the uh, Touring Car General Knowledge uh, Quiz. And uh, as, um, as many of you will be familiar, this is um, a familiar format. Um, it's, uh, it has a theme to it. And this week's theme is Jack's and Sears, which sounds like a pub that you might go into um, uh, midnight in Middlesbrough. Um, <laughs> well, it just does. Um, questions are to yourself, Creasy, and um, of course to Mr. O'Neill. And they're, um, uh, you should shout out the answer if you happen to know it. So, um, uh, Points are awarded per answer, um, so there's not really any pressure. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't translate to touring car results, so you know. So um, uh, we'll begin. Question one, who won the Jack Sears Trophy in 2019? <laughs> who wants it, you? No, just shout out the answer. I can't remember who you won it off. Uh, Rory Butcher. You're right, Chris. It was. It was Scotland Rory Butcher. That's one point. Please stay, stay there one second, Chris. Yeah. Oh, hang on a minute. He's going to get a trophy. Watch this. I bet you, <laughs> I bet you any money. <laughs> I thought he was going to get a Kit Kat or something. Sorry. Oh, mate, he'll come back with some muggy little trophy that his mum bought him because you have to give the Jackson. I, I, I haven't got the trophy, actually, Paul, before you wind it in. Um, Dan Mayo gave me this the other day. What is it? Oh, that's the new, cool. oh, wow. the, new, the new plaque for the trophy. Oh, they've missed an E off your name. <laughs> oh, <you're> joking. <laughs> I've got one for you, mate. Did you know I won a race? <laughs> What's that? The trophy. Have a quick look in this is map. It, is, it, is that me? There you go, mate. Can you see that? Hold on. Where is it gone? I've disappeared. So he's turned me off. Is that you? Tony's turned me video <laughs> off. He turned me video <laughs> right, I've put it yeah. back. I've put it back. Tony. Yeah. That is the most that? horrible thing I think anyone's ever done to me. Absolutely oh, horrendous. That's the worst thing. Oh, yeah, are you back there, Paul? Unbelievable. Anyway, here it is. We did. We did. Winner. One day. Your day will come, mate. Your day will come. Um, <clears throat> sorry, Chris, we're ruining you. Fingers crossed. That's, a, that's okay. It was, I was thinking, what a weird turn of events. It was a quiz and then suddenly it became a contest of who's got the most elaborate winner's records. 
<laughs> anyway, mate, 20, to... 2020, mate. 20, 2020. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, he was champion. I'd just rip me ITV contract up. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> Come on, mate. <clears throat> I've forgotten the whole point of this exercise. That was the quest, sorry. <laughs> Wait, so, I would have won a race when they didn't do it properly as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, you mean the one that had international stars in, like Ivan Muller and James Thompson, and we had pit stops, and we didn't have reverse grids where you'd get your best results? Shut up, And, they, and they were the only three people in it. <laughs> uh, no, there wasn't three people in it. There was six. I watched <laughs> Do you remember when them shit lime green Peugeots were racing around and there was only about nine of them on the grid? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. I was, okay. Chris, don't go with him. I remember that year, yeah, it was rubbish. <laughs> well, I, I, I was a bit of a fan of Peugeots. Yeah. Maybe they didn't finish, but, you know, they had a good paint scheme, so, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of Tim Harvey. Yeah. Well, Wait, back to the quiz. So where was back the quiz, mate. first one was... First one was Jack Sears, that was him to Creasy, so that was Rory Butcher, the answer there. Question two, I believe we're on. Who sang in 1989, I'd rather Jack than Fleetwood Mac? Now, this was a song, by the way, this was an actual name of the song. I'd rather Jack than Fleetwood Mac. I have not a clue, Creasy, do you know? You're younger than me. Nah. Does anyone else know? <laughs> Does the real O we know? Everyone's dead young on here. Like, I don't think anybody's getting this. Tony's, by about, Tony's the oldest by about 90 years. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> right, next one then, Chris. Go on, lad. Well, I'm a, well, I'll have to skip that one, but the answer, no, I'll just give the answer just to cut everybody, save everybody the grief. The answer was the Reynolds girls. Oh, oh Chris, <laughs> come on, mate. How is we going to know that? Well, it, well, it's it's all right. My mom, my mom and dad are the music experts, and they didn't even know that. <laughs> well, how are we going to know it? <laughs> Don't worry, uh, Chris. No, oh, they'll just use Siri or something, like most people do. Uh, <laughs> I can't. I'm on my phone. But don't worry. This one is re is relatively easy. Question three. This one's a relatively easy one. I I think. Um, which famous actor named Jack? Has the same hairstyle as Paul O'Neill. Jack Nicholson. Nicholson. <laughs> You're right, yeah. Paul got it first, so that's a point to you, Paul. Here we go. He didn't get it first. It was a delay. <laughs> this is the guy that famously said on him, what, oh, what's that film with Tom Cruise? Was it uh, All Good Men? He said, You can't handle the truth. He's got it. You yeah. can't handle the truth. That's it. <laughs> That's actually one of my favourite lines, actually. Who can't handle the truth? <laughs> um, I'm going to watch that for the rest of the night now. On the <laughs> oh, my God. Services. Uh, right, so that was question three. So question four. This one's a bit difficult because it's multiple choice. Don't get a point. Uh. Um, it's a multiple choice one. What is a seer? And it is A, part of a gun, B, a cooking utensil, or C, an engine component? Cooking utensil. No, ne nearly there, Paul. It is something to do with utensils, but it's not really meant for, you know, cooking purposes. Oh. So, it's no. Uh, Creasy? Gun. You're right, Creasy, it is. It is part of a gun. But apparently it's the emerge trigger mechanism of a gun. Yeah, well, he would know that because he supports Millwall. <laughs> I'll bear that in mind when I go on, when I find the stuff out on TripAdvisor. Not that I ever head to Millwall because it's quite some distance. Uh, that that's that's just great place, great place, South Bermondsey, down Jamaica Road. He's getting Get some pie mash. Sweet. I bet Scott Wall is that to actually. Like, oh well, that gives him. Uh, <laughs> I might as well entice my parents then. Right, final question. The Jack Sears Trophy is named after the British race and rally driver, but how many times did Mr. Jack Sears himself win the British Touring Car Championship? Twice. Once. You're right, Creasy, it was twice. And it was, um, and the years precisely, and you don't get points. It's for nine, 19, 1968. 
No, you're nearly there. There was 63 and it was 58. That was the inaugural one. 58, yeah, 58. I think it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that. Oh. <laughs> so, Mac, so, Creasy, you win that one. Three points to Paul's one with um, pretty much the second question being null and void. So, um, uh, well done, Creasy. And, uh, Tony, it's back up to you. Cheers, mate. Welcome. Tony, we can't hear you, you little mug. <laughs> oh, your mute buttons. Hey, you little lizard head. Turn your mute button off. <laughs> What's he doing? Oh, my God. He's absolutely caged you, Tony. Don't understand me. <laughs> um, are you going to come back next week, Chris? Yes. Yeah, um, well, yeah, obviously. I'm practically indispensable these days. <laughs> excellent, excellent. We don't need the uh, the guy in the top right corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that, was, that was a, a you need to come racing with us, mate. That was a particularly <laughs> crap quiz this week. So congratulations on that, Chris. It it gets crapper each week, and you should be really proud of the work that you put in. <laughs> Even, it might be crap, but I also find it rather uh, factual and fascinating. Uh, same here, Chris. Same here. Absolutely. Right. Nice one, Chris. And uh, cheers, Creasy and Owie. Uh, we're getting round to kind of clocking off time, but this is the part of the show where we take a bit of a gamble and say to people, if you want to un unmute your mics, uh, oh, if you have any no. questions, you are welcome to ask them. Uh, I will hover over Mr. Waller's uh, mute button. <laughs> yeah. If anyone has anything, unmute your mics and ask away. <laughs> gonna be first, uh, I just want to say, uh, Paul, you stole my question. Oh, I, Rich. I did see your message actually when it came up and you did stole my question. Sorry, mate. Scandalous, <laughs> absolutely scandalous. <laughs> you, 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 you know the score, mate. Have you got anything you want to ask Creasy? Because we we sometimes ask silly questions, to be honest. And you're you're a bit more of a pro, mate, and you'd ask proper questions. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um no, no nothing really. I mean, it's ever, everything that you know that, that Creasy covered and everyone else has covered. It's um yeah. I've got a question. For you, it, 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 yes. How much did you uh, did, did you pay to get Andretti on the show? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I couldn't believe it. I, I got Mario Andretti on for an interview, absolutely free of charge. Um, <laughs> I'm only joking with you. <laughs> there's no money involved anywhere. Um, I just sent him a message, and he said yes, and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was hey, a good what terms? On a personal note, mate, what uh, you run the hard compound mm. um, and you get some mega guests on, like you were talking about Mario Andretti. Un unbelievable, mate. Um, what's going on? Because I've seen a few tweets. Um, and what people don't understand is, I think they, because like, like this, me and Tony do this because we love, you know, what we do. And it's great that people come along. But it, like to, just to give you a, a bit of what of how it's been for me, I've been so busy, flat out doing stuff. Tony has been so busy, flat out doing stuff. And then this little time I've got now, I went out on my bike and I literally walked through the door. Still got my, I've still got my Leica on, so I'm going to show it you. Um, no, 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 look. So I'm, I'm naked and I've, and I've got Leica on. So literally, mate. Water bottle. Don't worry about it. Um, literally, it's hard working, it, mate. And you've got dependents and you've got family what um what's what's going on mate people sometimes don't realize that they are difficult it is just to put something together like this yeah um you know as, as you say you just do it because you love it you know you love motorsport and you want to share that with people um and um <clears throat> you know i say you know i've got a day job you know wife kids um got a commute and all that kind of stuff and i i do uh i do the high company in my spare time um and uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, you, you do put in a hell of a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of your own sort of brain power and, <laughs> and everything else into it. And sometimes it, it just gets to a point where you think oh, I'm done in. Mm -hmm. And um, and there's sort of, you know, and there's people 
you know, can criticise and things like that, which is fine. That's no problem. But, um, yeah, sometimes you just get the odd day where you think, oh, what am I doing? Um, just because, you know... What was my advice to you? Sorry? What was my advice to you on that message? Uh, I don't know. When was that? <laughs> Which was you that? said when you weren't going to get enough traction and you were talking about packing it in and bits and pieces. Oh, you basically told me to grow a set, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, Tracy. My God. Well, it's fair you know enough. Fair yeah. enough. You know what, man? No, you, you do a good job, mate. You do such a good job. It'd be a shame for, you know, you just got to keep going. And, and yeah. you love it as um, much as I everyone else. I think it's just, it's just a bit of a wobble. You know, you get the odd sort of time where, you know, the other stuff in life gets on top of you and you get a bit fed up with it. And, but, yeah, um, but you look how much support you had. Yeah, it, it, it kind of went a bit nuts. And, um, yeah. Um, I think now, you're, now, now you're fucked, though, because you've got to carry on. <laughs> exactly. I, I've already made the call. I've said, yeah, go on, then we'll, we'll, we'll crack on. I've got some, some other guests coming up as well. So. Well, yeah, well, hopefully they're better than Jay Kill. I <laughs> know. Oh, yeah, we're, yeah, we've got to fill a gap, haven't we? <laughs> well, well, there, well, there's the 18 getting the 18 restriction getting put on the YouTube channel like 30 seconds before it ends. Creasy says the F word. I mean, oh, sorry. I mean, Chris Holsey's there sitting in with his, his mum and dad are probably in the living room listening to Creasy saying, "Oh, he's a lovely guy," and then he comes out with the F bomb. I, I, I completely forgot where I was for a minute. Yeah, I bet you did. Not, mate. <laughs> it's all it's all right, guys. It's all right, mum. Swears all the time, and we watch a lot of, and my mum watches a lot of that Real Housewives crap. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're, used, we're used to the we're used to curses in this house. He's just telling me. He's just telling me about. <laughs> so it's and, I, and he's he's telling I, me about a few good men. Have you ever seen that film? What's that? What was that, Chris? Have you ever seen A Few Good Men, the film Few Good Men? You get an head on the truth. Yeah. Well, I've, I've seen bits of it on TV, but I'm mainly catching up on like IndyCar highlights and stuff because I'm, I'm a bit of a yuppie when it comes to the sports. What, Max Chilton not finishing a race? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Tony, Tony, should we end the show? Because the Chilton's like... The night the friends of mine, and to be honest, one day I'll probably have to rely on their money. So <laughs> I don't want to upset them, to be honest. Um, Wait, uh, they're, Rick, good friends, they're good friends of mine as well. You know? I know. Hey, listen, the, the good thing about the Chilterns is, mate, they can take a joke as well. They're good people. Um, they can. They can. Listen, I just want to say that a personal thanks for me, um, for for Chris always stepping up and doing that that quiz for us because it is absolutely shocking. I mean, I wouldn't even. I would. There's a guy that I don't get on with him with, and we have like scraps down the pub. I wouldn't even give him that quiz because it's that embarrassing. So Tony, you need to grow up and stop being like this. Um, but also, I want to say it's great to see everyone's faces here today, and some people that have not been around for a bit. Um, but all you put the light on, Paul, or, or you've got no electric left. Uh, it's on a meter. Uh, just haven't had time to put the fifty p in. I tell you what, though. <laughs> Who put the 50p in the dickhead? Why don't you wind your neck in, mate? <laughs> <laughs> but Rich, as well, I just want to say, mate, it'll be a real shame if you stop what you're doing, mate. It took. I'm into my 10th year of ITV uh, with Steve Ryder, as you can see, uh, Scott Waller putting up there. I'm into my 10th year when it starts, mate. And, <laughs> and from my point of view, mate, it took me four years to find my feet in that job. Four years, mate, and I never give up. And I'll, I'll, I'll be straight with every single person on here now. I got paid a pittance. I got paid a pittance on a Saturday and a Sunday, and that was, you know, a pittance. So I'm on okay money now, but it took me a long time, mate. And and I know what it's like when you're doing something you believe in, <clears throat> and sometimes it doesn't feel like you're getting anywhere with it, mate. But one thing you've got is you've got pull and. People like Mario and Dretti are not mugs and they'll come along, mate, and they'll come on your show and that's what you've got to believe in and that's that's how it'll be. Um, I, I just think he hit the wrong button, to be honest, Paul. I think he didn't. I think he meant to say no. <laughs> Did you reckon he pressed the button and thought, you don't look like Trevor McDonald? He must have thought... <laughs> 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 I thought well, this was on. an interview about my IndyCar career. And New that Trevor fella's changed. Jeez. <laughs> 
Oh, mate, but seriously, <laughs> stick at it from my yeah. Yeah. McDonald. Oh, oh my god. Um, yeah. well, listen, thanks. no, cheers, Paul. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Not a problem, mate. Thanks to everyone who's come along. Make sure you have a look on there, the pit stop, uh, positive pit stops Facebook. Uh, we'll come up with somebody else that we're going to be speaking to. Um, and yeah, it's great to be here. Great to see Tony on top form, um, doing the business. Chris, thank you. But, Creasy, as usual, mate, late doors, I give you a shout. Can you come on? You've been dead honest, mate. You uh, you keep doing what you're doing, Captain, and uh, you know I'm your biggest supporter, mate, even though I do take the mickey. Cheers, mate. No worries. Right then, everybody, peace out. Cheers to that. Let's Cheers, everyone. Cheers, 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 Cheers. Don't Cheers, it's bad for your health. See you guys. Bye. Bye.